hydrogen variable protocol H2H. Uh, this is the third issue of the same series, three in total, dealing with mental maps or muscle memory, some people prefer it, with somatic markers, the system of how we access those mental maps and muscle memory within our body and bring them out situation dependent and as per need. And now the final installment of that being the, uh, the concept of speed and accuracy trade-offs and how that affects. Basically speed and accuracy trade-offs is the ability to remain active in terms of accuracy. The faster you go, the lower the accuracy and therefore compensation on how to uh, improve that within our world of combatives and, and such. So we're dealing with the first one of all mental maps, just to give a brief recall. Uh, mental maps are what we call muscle memory for some people. It's a matter of how we train to create a, a, a sequence of movements in our, in our cerebellum and what we call learned behavior. Then we move that forward into the second series where we talked about uh, the somatic markers and basically this is how the body, the mind stores those mental maps and how we can access them and how they access them, how we access them during duress and all this type of thing and how we can prefer, uh, move them into what we would call uh, a preferred sequence. Some people refer to that as uh, mission specific training, uh, this type of thing. And that's uh, your go-to move. Now, now in this third installment, we're going with speed and accuracy trade-offs. So speed and accuracy trade-offs are, are basically the concept that the faster you run a mental map, the, the, the more variables that come into the speed of, 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 it, then of a movement, then your accuracy decreases. Um, anything that you try to do very, very fast uh, in order to remain accurate uh, or to remain with an increased level of accuracy has to be done through training and through a specific method of training if you want to optimize it because there's a lot of variables within it. Uh, the variables that happen within speed and accuracy trade-offs are of course the quality of the, of the muscle, uh, muscle memory, the mental map. We spoke earlier about the fact of the muscle being uh, little sensors all through the body and that muscle map refers to those sensors as the map is made and the higher quality map is the more firing of those sensors. Well, the same thing works when we issue a movement. If we do things fast, not all the sensors get to fire. We don't spill out the mental map as best as we could, depending on the rest. Now, moving to the second one, that also gets a lag involved in it as we start to bring it out, or the movement is brought out in, in, in a hesitant fashion. So, now, speed and accuracy. Three things come into speed and accuracy quite rapidly. Of course, the quality of the mental map that we're going to initiate. But the mental map is produced in a static form. A static form meaning that we practice our technique over and over again, 3,000 times, 2,500 is the absolute minimum to make the map. And when we start practicing longer than that, 4,000, 5,000, in order to increase that map, accurize it, accurize it. But the map is still done in that static mode. It's how to do that technique. Then we now modified our, 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 our somatic markers so that map comes out as our go-to move. That's good too, because that brings it out fast and removes the problem of, of, of hesitation. But the third component, excuse me, the second and the third component are both dealing with the delivery of that technique to a required target. The complication comes through two, trajectory and through range. Both of these variable. If I'm looking at a target that's high and the target moves to low, then I have to change trajectory and of course that would cause a complication. We know through the study of ballistic movements that once we launch a ballistic movement, a punch being a ballistic movement, that you can mess it up, but it's hard to, to rearrange it so that it, re, it returns to a new target and successfully strikes that with the original power and intent. So, that's a complication of, of, of trajectory moving. And of course, those elements of trajectory can cause complication in the accuracy. Vice versa, we have the range complication. So if the, the range moves forward, or the range moves back, and then we have to compensate so that we don't overshoot or undershoot and deliver the target as we wish, especially if we're looking to optimize force application and penetration, we want to have uh, specific ranges as, as, as accurately as we can, and of course those start to, to become traded off as we go faster and faster. And as our position moves, and as their position moves, we now have two positions moving. These are all elements that come into range and, and trajectory and the execution mental map in terms of optimizing that total to make that solid impact in the fashion we wish to. 
Now, if you're a boxer, perhaps you may wish, perhaps you may wish to strike long. So your ranges will be different. You, now, if you're a grappler, you may wish to be coming in closer and have closer ranges, or a shoot range, for example, where you come in. So these ranges are variable depending on what your methodology is and what your intents or your goals are, or how you wish to execute your mannerisms of your specific art, whatever it may be. So, when we train, we want to execute our things to the best possibility, so we train for a specific of execution in the most optimal manner. Fine. So, first we targeted the mental maps, and we put that in order. Then we targeted our filing cabinet. We put that in order. Now, when we're stuck with the concept of trade-off, then are we stuck with it, or can we do something about it? That's the question that comes to, to light. Well, the fact is that we could do something about it. We can train, because you see, everything is actually uh, a function of, of mathematics, a function of awareness, a function of observation, a function of familiarity with a situation, situation being method, range, and trajectory. So, if we build into our training program a system where we first start contacting and getting familiar with targets, and then those targets start to move, or we start to move them, depending on how we wish to wish organize our training, we start to create situations where we become mentally familiar with those ranges and those locations of targets and, and which methodology to use in terms of that portion of the equation which becomes that whole equation of execution and successfully hitting the target. The more we train, even if it's just training to initiate, I'll give you an example of a very simple training method, just moving forward with an opponent, maintaining that same range, let's pretend it's going to be three feet. We move three feet, we move three feet, we move three feet. We keep, so that we can recognize immediately and automatically, that's three feet. And we know immediately and automatically what techniques work within that range. And we know how to optimize that by changing to another technique. For example, we'll move to two feet. At the same token, we can freeze one of those and have the opponent move around, delivering them to us, and then we can again start recognizing those, those, those ranges and executing technique based on those range. As we move through that development, of different uh, movements at different times, you, me, whoever is the one that's moving, we then start to optimize that complete option of, of the, uh, the, the speed action train off. As we start to become familiar with those, we become, as we did with the mental map, kind of an extension of the mental map in terms of accuracy correction. So our accuracy is getting better and better and better. You always have more problem the faster you go. But the idea is to minimize it to the most acceptable manner or optimize it to the most advantageous manner. And that could be, for example, control of range. So these are situations where you can use it. Now, I'll give you an example. If you know that you have a certain capability within a certain range, you can, you can use it in your overall strategy, your tactical approach to something in terms of how you respond or when you respond or when you issue a certain thing or under what condition. Because you're taking those range effects, effects into standard all the time. They're becoming standard. They're standard in your mind. They're standard in your memory. They're standard in your mental function. They're standard in your execution. And that's where you start to optimize the entire package. Thank you very much. I appreciate you, your assistance and your, your, your support. Now, you're going to find part one, part two, and part three all here on my Facebook, excuse me, on my uh, uh, YouTube uh, channel. Um, along with a lot of other great stuff. I thank you very much for your time. You have a great day.